Hello everyone, Jeff here to go over the call and put practice exercises which are attached to the unit content. I would recommend trying those exercises on your own and then watching this video to get some additional explanation and make sure your answers are correct before proceeding to the assignment. In the first part of the exercises, you are going to purchase a Dell February 14 call. So you are buying an option. It has to do with the underlying stock Dell. It expires in February. The strike price is 14 and it is a call giving you the right to buy. The premium, the amount you pay for the option, is two dollars and we're going to assume that if we're considering some sort of interest cost that it's already included in the two dollars so we don't have to add anything extra to it to account for foregone interest. The first question here, the Dell call gives you the right to buy something on or before the third Friday in February. We already know that it is the right to buy because it is a call option. Call options give you the right to buy. We know it's the third Friday in February because the expiration month is February and options expire on the third Friday of a month. A call option gives you the right to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock at the strike price. And that's exactly what choice A here says. It is 100 shares of Dell at the strike price 14. Remember that it is 100 shares. And so an option relates to 100 shares and not a single share like choice B is trying to get you to pick. And when you purchase a call option, the call option gives you the right to buy the stock. So it, it does not give you the right to buy the option. You've already bought the option. You now have the right to buy the stock. Choice A. Two, when you purchase the call, you pay or receive something. When you purchase an option, no matter what type of option it is, you pay the premium. Just like when you buy milk, you pay for the milk. When you buy an option, you pay for the option. You pay the premium $2. When you purchase the call, you pay $2. Just note, the important thing is that you've bought the option, so you're paying something, and it doesn't have anything to do with the strike price. You pay the premium $2. Three, you will end up exercising this option if you exercise a call option when at the expiration the stock price is higher than the strike price. Don't be confused by any other factors like the premium or whether the stock has gone up or down or done nothing. You exercise a call option if the price of the stock turns out to be higher than the strike price. That is choice A. You will end up exercising this option if the price of Dell at expiration is higher than $14. Scroll down. Four. Some mathematical examples here. At expiration, Dell is, Dell is trading for $18. Your payoff on the call is uh, by payoff, we just mean what's going on with the option and ignoring for a second the fact that you paid a premium for it, which we'll subtract off later. So if Dell is trading for 18 and this is a 14 strike call, you will exercise it because it's higher than $14. Your payoff on the call is four. You have the right to buy Dell at $14. It's trading in the market for $18, so you could exercise the right to buy it for $14, immediately sell it for $18, and make $4. If we then want to look at our overall profit, we have to remember that in order to get this option, we did have to pay a premium of $2. So although the payoff on the call is $4, your overall profit is $2 less than that, which is $2. If at expiration Dell is trading for $12, your payoff on this call is zero. You are not going to exercise the option at all. You will let it expire. You're not going to exercise the right to buy something for 
if if you wanted it you would just pay the market price twelve dollars so the payoff is zero you let it expire and your profit is minus two you've lost the premium that you paid for this option next part you are going to write a GE February 20 call the stock is GE it expires in February its strike price is 20 it is a call the premium on this call is one dollar again including interest cost of any and the first question here true or false write a call sell a call and short a call all mean the same thing is true it's a potentially confusing thing when you're working with options is that sometimes there's words that all mean the same thing uh, write means sell and if you sell a call or write a call, you can also say that you are short the call. This is true. Seven, writing this call does something. Right, this is somewhat more tricky than our first example when we were purchasing the call. But when we're writing a call, it is useful to think about purchasing the call first. So somebody has purchased the call and somebody has written the call. The person who purchased the call has the right to buy 100 shares of GE at a price of $20. If that person exercises the call, you, who have written the call, are obligated to sell it to them for $20. That choice here is C obligates you to sell GE stock for $20 if the price of GE at expiration is higher than $20. I will say that over again because I know that this is a little tricky. Keep in mind that an options trade has two sides. A person purchased the call and another person sold the call or wrote the call. The person who purchased the call is the one who has the right to exercise that person is going to exercise the right to buy if the price of GE is greater than $20. If the price turns out to be greater than $20, the person on the other side of the trade, which is you in this example, are obligated to fulfill that right for them. And that means you are obligated to sell GE stock for $20 if the price of GE at expiration is higher than $20. If the price of GE is lower than $20, then the person who purchased the option is not going to exercise it and you will not have to do anything. Uh, a and B are incorrect here because you do not have a right when you write a call, you only have a right when you purchase one. So writing the call obligates you to sell if the person who purchased the option chooses to exercise it, which will happen at a price higher than $20. Number eight here, when you write the call, you receive the premium. This is going along with our previous question. When you purchase a call, you pay the premium. When you write a call, you receive the premium. So the premium is the incentive you have to obligate yourself to possibly do something later. Scrolling down to the next. Oops. We got some mathematical examples here. At expiration, GE is trading for 17. Your payoff is something or other. Again, I always like to think in terms of purchasing the call and then see what the other end of it is. So here, GE is trading for $17. We know that a call is exercised when the stock price is higher than the strike price. Here, the price stock price is lower than the stock price the person who bought the option is not going to exercise it you will do nothing on the option and your profit is the premium you received for writing the option one dollar so you will have to do nothing and you keep the dollar that you received if at expiration GE is trading for $25, the strike price is 20, the person who purchased the call will exercise the option to buy at 20, 
you will be obligated to sell it to them for 20 you will lose five dollars on the payoff because you will have to provide them something worth twenty five dollars but they're only giving you twenty for it and your profit is a little bit higher minus four dollars because although you lost the five dollars here you still get to keep that premium of one dollar scrolling down to the next part we are going to purchase a put in this particular case we are going to purchase a Netflix put that expires in February with a strike price of 90 and and the premium on this put is eight dollars first of all purchasing a put gives you the right to sell a stock more specifically if you had other options here it gives you the right to sell 100 shares of Netflix stock on the third Friday in February for ninety dollars but purchasing the put gives you the right to sell the stock. 12. When you purchase the put, you pay or receive something. When you buy an option or purchase an option, you pay the premium. Premium is $8. So the answer here, you pay $8. Again, you've purchased something, you pay the premium. 13. You end up exercising this option if this is a put option. You exercise a put option if the price of the stock ends up below the strike price and that is choice C here. The price of Netflix at expiration is lower than ninety dollars. Again the choice only has to do with whether the stock price is lower than the strike price. It doesn't have anything to do with the premium. And the numerical examples at expiration Netflix is trading for 100 if it is trading for 100 you are not going to exercise the right to sell your stock for 90 because you could sell it at the market price 100 instead you are going to not exercise the option you are going to it will expire worthless your payoff on the option is zero and your profit will be minus eight you paid eight dollars for the premium and ended up doing nothing with the option so you lose the premium if at expiration Netflix is trading for 85 you will exercise the option to sell for 90 and earn five dollars you could simply buy it at the market price 85 and then exercise your option to sell for 90 immediately make five dollars in payoff however since you've paid a premium of eight dollars you end up with a profit of minus three dollars notice that you still exercise the option in this case because a profit of minus three dollars is better than what would happen if you did not exercise the option which is that you'd lose the whole premium eight dollars scrolling down to some additional overall exercises 16 is asking you to consider this statement when you purchase an option you pay the premium when you write an option you receive the premium this is true for both calls and puts doesn't make any difference you can replace the word an option with the word bread when you purchase bread you pay for the bread when you sell which again is the same thing as write. when you sell bread you receive the price of the bread so it doesn't matter what kind of option you were talking about if you purchase the option you pay the premium if you write or sell the option you receive the premium 17 a call option has a payoff if the stock price ends up above the strike price a put option has a payoff if the stock price ends up below the strike price scrolling if an option is exercised we have a bunch of choices here about if the option purchaser receives a payoff and if the option writer receives a payoff or loses a payoff 
So the questions are asking us basically who receives a payoff and who loses any money, um, if, if anything. So if an option is exercised, it means that the person who purchased the option receives a payoff because it is the person who purchased the option who has the right to exercise it and they would only do so if they were going to receive a payoff. So we know the option purchaser receives a payoff if the option is exercised. That looks like we're good with choices A and B in that case. And the option writer is on the other side of the transaction. If the option purchaser exercises the option and therefore receives a payoff, it is the person on the other side of the transaction who is obligated to make that delivery to the purchaser of the option and they lose the payoff. In essence, the option purchaser is receiving the payoff from the option writer. It's got to come from somewhere. And so the choice, the answer here is B. If an option is exercised, it's because the option purchaser is going to receive a payoff and the person on the other side of the transaction, the option writer, loses that payoff. 19. True or false, the payoff to the writer of an option is always the negative of the payoff to the purchaser of the option. This is true and a very handy fact to keep in mind because it's often easier to think in terms of the person who purchased the option than the person who wrote the option. So a good exercise when you are working with the writer of an option is to think in terms of the purchaser and then negate it. And this goes along with question 18, but if the option is exercised, there is a payoff to the purchaser of the option and the payoff to the writer of the option is the opposite of that. In other words, it's a loss. They're equal and opposite. 20, true or false, the purchaser of an option will never have a negative payoff. That is true because the purchaser of an option has the right to exercise the option. If there were going to be a negative payoff, the person would simply not exercise the option and instead get payoff zero. And keep in mind, we've used the word payoff here. It's possible that once you subtract off the premium that was paid for the option, there ends up being a negative profit, but there can never be a negative payoff. As always, please ask me questions if you have them. You will notice that when you look at the answers, they do have some brief uh, explanations. If you would like more explanation and the video didn't answer your question, please ask and I can either answer in writing or make an additional video expanding more on the specific question that you have.